Trying to be great, baby. Trying to be great. When it comes to the talent-wise of New Orleans, you had to grind if you played uptown basketball at every playground. You can't come to that park and not, you know, and don't have no game. You won't get picked on. The actual uh, digging yeah. with Kobe. Yeah, like, yeah. All right, basically, fucking war zone. On my very first day as a freshman, somebody got shot in the front yard. But Cohen was known for his rich basketball tradition. I think as far as me being introduced to Cohen basketball was like in the early 90s, uh, right when Dwayne Spencer uh, came. And just being able to go into games, like coaches used to let a couple of kids out the neighborhood getting the game for free or whatever. I'm talking about wall to wall pack, and it was just like, man, as a basketball player, you wanted that same feeling because it's just like they were winning games. It was just, uh, it was something that you look forward to because it's just like on Tuesdays and Fridays, you know, if Coin had a home game, it was going to be hard to get in, and it was going to be some exciting basketball. A lot of competition. We had a lot of schools within a small radius uptown with between Cohen, Booker T, McMain, Forche, and those four high schools right there all within a five, ten mile radius. Back then, Booker T was still good. In the, I'm gonna say, the late 80s, I used to go to a Blue T game. I would venture downtown to see Tim Singleton. The dungeon was one way in, one way out, and you weren't winning at Carver very many times. Basketball was just, it was top-notch games, like Carver Coin was very popular. Rivalry, Carver, Clark, Coin, Clark, Coin, Carver. That was big games coming up in New Orleans. When we go, like when we go play Carver, they will fill up their gym also. Now they, they follow, they fans are serious, like Coin fans, to this day. You know, and um, when we played them, if we win at Carver, they throwing rocks at us. I'm telling you off the dump. I think they throw rocks if we lose. As a matter of fact, that's just how they work. Coin was pretty much the creme de la creme when it comes to uptown basketball. You know, you had Forche also. Um, but from the public school standpoint, Coin had a really good run. And uptown, like, you had places you go for purposes. Like, you would go to Forche. If you wanted to play basketball and football, go to a Kennedy downtown if you wanted to play two sports. But if you wanted to be a part of something, what we call winning tradition, we, we, we was going to corn. It's raw talent uptown. It's, to this day, it's just we got to get them off the street. You know, it's a, it's a lot of talent I've seen growing up, and I'm 50 now. So I've seen a lot of talent that could have done it and, you know, that did do it. You know, I've seen a lot of raw, like Greedy era, Dwayne Spencer era. Kerry Kittles, Randy Livingston, that's the guys I watched. I had the luck, the good luck of staying home and going to school and getting to see those guys play growing up. So I saw Greedy Hole High School, Dwayne Hole High School, um, Kerry Kittles, most of my friends I played against, you know, like St. Arthur, Carl Vacon, Shaw. I got a lot of friends that played ball. That were rough. It's the uptown thing, nigga. From the three to the thirteen. As I proceed to hit the motherfucking weed, I be giving you exactly what you need to vibe your head. Cause I know you likes to vibe it back and forward to what that DJ Dow Jones.
there's a lot we can talk about, but a lot of shit <laughs> deserves not to be said. But Uptown, I just tell you this, if, if you knew, say, and during that time, I'm coming up in the 90s, it was uh, uh, Louisiana, I mean, New Orleans was the murder capital during this time. I survived guns, drugs, fucking mischief through this whole time. Like, put it like this, basketball, that shit was easy. <laughs> like, to, to, like, I'm out, I'm off the, I'm out the 11 wall. That's a, that's a part of the city, that's a section. Now, in that, the St. Thomas is our housing project, but we got the Mac Melf and Calio. I go to school in their area, but it's uptown. She's like, listen, if you ain't from around there, you were supposed to be there. Type, and like, I was able to survive that, so me, being able to put on green and white and pack a gym, that shit was fun. Even though, like me walking past the shit I'm talking about was kind of fun too, but, <laughs> but, but being in the gym, it's like a, you know what I'm saying? It's like your serenity, it's like yeah. you're at peace. It's like, the, then you get actually get actually get a peace of mind because you, you know, you're there with a purpose and then you start saying more like the camaraderie. It's different things that, like before I got the corner to play basketball, I was in the seventh, eighth grade, like I was telling you, and I just knew I had to be here. I had to be a part of that particular thing they had going on. It was just something about, you know, that gym, walking in that little bitty fucking matchbox and the fucking feeling you get when the people was beating on them, expecting you to be at the, you know, play at your best. Then the, all the goons that we talk about, they always around. They were, they were interested in your basketball prowess, not your street prowess. So you had a reason to show them you can do other, you know what I'm saying? There's other ways, or uh, I ain't gotta mess with that. Yeah, it was a tough time, but shit, you had to survive here. It was like, it, so that, you know, with that being said, to walk the streets and survive, to get in the gym knowing that some sort of protection is there and you, you have some sort of love and you don't have to worry about a, a nothing, you know, no too much mischief, that wasn't nothing. All you had to do is worry about a, a team that's wearing the opposite color. And more than likely, got your ass kicked, you come up here. I mean, growing up in the Cali, quite naturally, Rosenwald was just a walk. Uh, that was a treacherous walk, because, you know, I actually graduated, I actually looked older than I was, so, you know, you always had the guys, man. You, you got some marijuana on you, you selling, whatever, but so that was always, it was treacherous, right? But Rosenwald was quite naturally, it was close, so I could walk there. But I, to be honest with you, I mean, I think I got a lot of toughness from growing up in the Cali, playing at Rosenwald. But where I earned my stripe was at Line Center. Line Center was the, for me, the mecca of basketball when we were young. All the bitty basketball was there. Then when they take the bitty basketball goes off there, you got to play on the 10 feet rim. And, you know, those, you know, I used to walk. You know, that's what people don't understand. I used to walk from the Cali to Line Center like it was around the corner. Or jog just to get in shape, just to test my metal. And, you know, that's, that's kind of from a basketball standpoint, Line Center was the mecca where, you know, you earned your stripes there and you played against the older guys. People came, so you kind of made a name for yourself. It was gritty. Um, we all come up in the parks. We didn't have the luxuries of the different facilities. We didn't have really good facilities. And the ones that we had, you didn't, you wasn't able to just get in there. So uh, most of the time you play, you, 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 you got it out the mud in the, in the playground. We got to understand what you learned in the playground. When you was a young kid, you wanted to play, you had the, them older guys had to pick you on. And you, you was willing to do whatever you was going to do. That might meant bring your own ball out there and shoot the shot first. You know, if you miss that shot, you might not play. And them older guys, you had to learn how to defend. They wouldn't let you shoot their ball. You, you better learn how, you had to pick up a role. Kids today don't quite, the kids today are more talented than we ever was. But they didn't learn them. They, they kind of missing the basic fundamentals that we all grew up learning. I think I think back then it was a lot lot more tougher. Not that it's not tough now, but just the dynamic of uptown back then, the, the areas people lived in within the housing projects, and what Nord had available for the kids. Kids came in a lot more uh, with a lot more knowledge of the game and everything back pre Katrina, because they they either had them played on Nord teams or they played in their junior high teams and everything like that. Now it's kind of shift more to summer basketball where they if they with a good program they coming in ready it was still about development and those kids from uptown back in the day were just hard nosed man we 
you know, socioeconomically, we just were struggling, and we just would go out there on the court and, and go get it. You go get what you want. You know, nothing was given and nothing was taken for granted. I'm going to be biased. Right. I'm going to be biased because I went to college. And I'm always, well, everybody always asks me, like, what is my top five? My top five is Randy Livingston, Greedy Daniels, Dwayne Spencer, and I'll let y'all figure out the rest. You had a Michael Bolock that you heard all the stories about at Booker T. Washington. So you heard all of the stories, but I got to see him up close in person just at the park at Booker T. And he was a monster. You had, back then, Booker T was still good. In the, I'm gonna say, the late 80s, I used to go to a Booker T game. I would venture downtown to see Tim Singleton. The dungeon was one way in, one way out, and you weren't winning at Carver very many times. And then I got to see Robert Pack. And then I got to see Jared Jackson. And then across the river, you had O. Perry Walker at the time. It wasn't Landry Walker, it was O. Perry Walker with, um, I'll tell you, um, Jonathan Edwards who went to Georgetown. Like, it was a beast. So I used to go to those games as like a 19 year old, and my eyes just would get big. And um, you had Jaron Jackson at coin, like I said. Um, and then as it got real late 80s, then coin really took off. De La Salle was still good. Um, they had Dwayne Bryant. Um, they had Carl Hankton. Then they had Kurt Hankton, Jake Fazan. Coach Tillette was a popular coach. Um, Jesuit was okay, a little bit uptown. They had Cass Clark. These are guys that I look up to and looked up. Um, but, you know, it was amazing. I, I saw those guys and um, I looked up to them. I thought the world of them. In fact, I mean, I would try to take something out of each one of them game and put it in my game. Anytime I seen it, I went with it. But Billy Henderson. Was, was a ball player that, you know, that I got to collide with. You had, like I said, Tevis Stooks, um, Harold Arsenal. Um, I don't want to leave nobody out that was really significant. And y'all niggas know me. I don't give a fuck if how you feel. I, I knew, you know you wasn't real like that. I'm going to just call it what it is, me. And if you see me on the court, you know I felt the same way. But who I'm, who I'm leaving out, but we had, you had, uh, you had Renard Allen, Neil Reed, um, um, this at these particular times, St. Aug was St. Augustine had them won the national championship down here for his high school. You had their team with a few, you know, a few uh, good guards and, and good big men. Eugene Edgerson and all them was on that crew. But the city was full of full of talent that's, that that you can look up. D1 during my during that particular time because Harold Harold and Billy ended up at Weber State. Um, Billy Jones. That Harold and Billy Henderson went to Harold Arsenal and Billy Henderson went to Weaver State. Billy Jones went to Pepperdine. Tevis Tevis ended up at Baylor. Neil Reed went to uh, Indiana. 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 Indiana played for Bob Knight. Um, Eugene Edgerson played at Arizona. The Lou Olson. But like far as like our young say college pro talent, little uh, Tyree and Lamar Peters. Man, if anybody of significance get to see this, they need to get them dudes a shot. That's some people that deserve a shot. Young, vibrant leaders that can do, like, I don't, like Ty Tyree may be small and Lamar, but it's still enough. These guys deserve a shot. They deserve a shot, period. You always have a guy that, you know what I'm saying, that don't get there proper, because like, like, all right, people wouldn't have gave DJ his just due because he played in the Catholic League, but what, what Randy also played in the Catholic League, but he was uptown. You know what I'm saying? But when when you do something and it's significant, it is what it is. These dudes have made strides that, like even myself, like I can say, I probably can say that at my time or whatever, I was a better ball player than DJ, but DJ did something that I wanted to do. That's what you don't get. Like, he had that one thing that I didn't. Niggas don't give props like that. Like, and I don't give a fuck if it was a better attitude. It's just he had it. You know what I'm saying? He did it. You got to get that man his just due, period. He still get a jersey every year. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? Dude, still get him a jersey. And like Bo. Bo, Bo is uh, overseas. He done made a great living for himself. Bo McKayla.
shit, we was growing up in the streets. Now, it was easy for us to say we want to turn gangster than to say we're going to push all that shit aside, fuck with, a, you know, whatever you feel and do what's right, try to make a better, you know, a better way. Like, that shit to me was means to an end. This here was means to beginnings for everybody. You, you know what I'm saying? You get pro pro opportunity. You help out families and, like, man, it's, it, it was just unbelievable what you was, what would have been able to do for us, like, who you can help compared to taking a chance, getting shot at, uh, being out trying to hustle or sell some whatever, and taking a chance, throwing your life away. Uh, you having to hurt somebody who's trying to hurt you for whatever reason or whatever, you know what I'm saying, maybe. But Corn, through all that, had a lot of craziness went on here. But at the same time, it saved a lot of people. I know engineers. You know what I'm saying? I know, uh, I know military top grade people. You know what I'm saying? I know shit, nurses and doctors. Well, nurses and, and physicians, still doctors, but from this, these bricks right here, same opportunity as, you know, I had, uh, anybody else had to do something, you know, to do the proper thing. Yeah. Everybody had it, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's why I say I don't regret shit. I did some stuff that ended up ultimately being a reason for me um, chasing the pros at one point. But I made it out of here. I mean, you got a, uh, in, in this area of, of uptown, you got a tough kid, but they're, they're, they're loyal. They're loyal kids and they work really, really hard. You know, pretty much uh, all the kids that has come through Booker T are, are all hardworking kids. So, yeah, those are the type of kids that, that we, we, we've had come through. The thing is, it's just like basketball, it's like an old saying. College coaches want a New Orleans kid because they know they're going to be tough, tough-minded, and whatever they get the job done, they're willing to do it. So it's just like, if you can be competitive whether you're playing on a crate or a basketball, uh, shooting ball in a trash can, so you have no choice but to be hungry because you got to see the bigger picture. It's just like, man, I could get out of my neighborhood, get a free education, and, all, and I'm playing basketball, so that was a win-win situation across the board for any guys that came from my area. I guess what's just kind of your take on, you know, where Uptown Basketball kind of stands right now? I mean, Wright, you know, really been coming up, McMain, Booker T, you know, like you mentioned earlier, even Newman, you know, with uh, Coach Livingston getting back then, you know, they got one of the best players, you know, really in the country in his class. Right, 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 right. Well, that's good. He, he he did that when he went there in the early 90s and bought Newman on the map. And uh, they're getting that again with between Javon and what the other kid name? Uh, Chris Lockett. Chris Lockett. Yeah. Chris, Chris actually getting a little more notoriety than J Javon. But they, them together, that's a serious talent. Yeah. And between all the talent they built at uh, Booker T through the Kip uh, network and everything like that, that's great for them to be coming in the first year. But really, the first two years to make the state uh, final four in McMain, they built a solid, solid program in the last uh, three years that Coach Kelly's been there. They've uh, kind of built back on what it was right after Katrina when they had some other coaches on there. I bet I, I told my staff before the pandemic happened is um, we got to sharpen our iron, and what I mean by that is, you know, everybody is starting to develop this talent and they're starting to harvest these kids and everybody's creating these really good programs. What it does is it makes the city of New Orleans looks, look very good. Um, from a public school standpoint, the private schools, you know, they've been doing pretty well. But from a public school standpoint, it's so many dynamics that we have to deal with on an everyday basis. Some of our kids don't know where they're gonna get their next meal from. Some of our kids are staying from pillar to post. And to see the job that some of these coaches have been able to do, with, ain't got to be mindful. Little to no resources is amazing. Um, now, granted, we all competitors by nature, and you want to win. But at the end of the day, I think, I think a lot of times there's a disconnect with them children, with, with the humble beginnings to where they be. You, you see the finished product, but you forget where they come from. And um, what, what you're finding out when you say you got 
the schools you named, Booker T, McMahon, uh, who else? You, you named somebody else? Newman. 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 All of these schools. You know what that's telling you, Josh? There's more kids being developed at the younger ages. You know, when, when, when we had our little run, it was just our kids and maybe a few other kids. Now, you know, you got a lot of kids being developed. So that means a lot of different public schools are coming up now. You have, what, at least four schools where we don't have to compete with so could be right and Booker T could because they're in the same classification. But you have us that is going to compete for a state championship. Newman is going to compete. Booker Washington and Wright is all can, can going to compete. So that's a good thing. And we all in a, what, five-mile radius of each other. So these kids know each other. So when we do play each other, these games uh, should be about back in the day. Like we need those fans to get, come back in the gym, standing room on. These kids need that because that's how it was. That's what we all as coaches was brought up on. I would say, you know, surveying the state of Louisiana, uh, this is some of the better basketball in the state. And, and you know, I, I, I hear a lot, you know, a lot of times, you know, people kind of take slight to, you know, Louis, uh, New Orleans basketball, I would say. But New Orleans basketball is a really strong basketball. It's a tough basketball. It's a tough brand of basketball, you know. Being in Alabama all those years and competing for state championships and winning state championships, being here, it's like, at the end of the day, the, the New Orleans kid is a tough kid. He's a hardworking kid. And typically, the way they play basketball is they grind it out. They're grinded out type of I mean, group of kids. First off, I want to say uh, this is a sincere shout out to Booker T men and women uh, in this particular year for winning, winning it and coming up. That's the type of prominence that you know that you you used to get with schools uptown where you had you know girls and boys and volleyball team. You knew that team. You know that basketball team was good. But Booker T then put together a really good crew that I watched. Now as far as McMain and 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 um. And right. All the credit go to our family. <laughs> I'm just playing. Shout out to shout out to McMain and Wright because uh, those guys they they didn't put together some <laughs> some really good really good youngsters. And I say that because and I mean the Cohen family and all because half of the kids that plays on those teams actually uh, relatives of some sort of that I played with uh, who came through Cohen. A lot of them, like I just rented, and I found that out just a couple of years ago, going in there seeing kids from, like, man, he looked like it. And these are guys who played up under me or played before me. These are their kids, you know what I'm saying, that, that I'm seeing grow. And, like, shout out to both of those schools because, honestly, they, they've made some real strides. I, I look forward to trying to see uh, McMain probably make a run for it this year, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Marty. <laughs> Call all y'all out, boo, you too. <laughs>
I've been seeing these kids since they were young. And I want to point out, like, Nicholas uh, Kegley. Like, I always say, like, he is my favorite kid. There's nothing that uh, my other players or whatever, but I went into knowing and telling them, like, why he's my favorite player. Like, he just don't care. Me and Adore are just, like, whatever is needed to be done, he's willing to do that. And I gave him a nickname, Draymond Green, because it just, like, He's the heart and soul of our team, in a sense. But it, de it still comes from a kid like P. Sean. Like, just this year alone, just came out of nowhere. He was, what, the co-district MVP, honorable mention all state or whatever. No, he wasn't on no one radar. Uh, you know you have Alex Hammond. Once this kid, light switch comes on, he's gonna be one of the most unstoppable kids in, in the country. And I'm not just saying that because me and his dad was high school teammates, and we have a bunch of bunch of conversations about once the light do click, like only person that's gonna be able to contain him is him. And you know we still got some of the best shooters, uh, which is Pichon, Malik Reinhardt. Uh, we got a flow general and turbo and track, and the list go on. So it just like you can't just key on one kid on our team. We are ten deep. And the thing is, it's just like we got a kid by the name of Brandon Veen. Everybody just think he's a defensive stopper, but like height over heart all day. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like that's the thing that why we feel as a staff that we have the right pieces now to compete and win a state championship. I was the first one started. I wanted to go to like Maine first, and then I found out like that they they, went, they didn't have a good program. Until they had a uh, head coach, a uh, new head coach coming in, and that's when I had, had called them up. I was like, I'm gonna need help over there, so I had called all of them to get the uh, whole team over there to start some more. Start some more. And what uh, what y'all think? You know, when uh, when that was, you know kind of came to y'all, it was like I kind of want y'all to come with me. Yeah, we were just like we just gonna go with them, just keep it going. Like we were playing with the rising stars, I was like teaming up and stuff. We just gonna go back, man, and just keep it going. He was, he was already a success. Call us together. So we might as well keep it, keep it all the same. What made y'all want to help bring your man back? Uh, my uncle went to Mac Man before I came down, like by around like 2014 and stuff. And he was he played he played sports, but like I don't know if it was really that good or nothing. But I just wanted to just come and do. Build off, like build off him, like when he, when he was playing sports, and just try to be better than him. He just gonna just keep just going hard every game, working hard. And like we sophomores, they see and all that, we not even worry about that. It's like every year we just gonna keep improving, just keep getting better. We've been we've been playing up since we were young, so we've been playing keep it old enough since we were young, so we can use be used to. It. They're resilient kids. I, I... I've coached some really, really talented basketball players over my years in Alabama, but this group of kids, they, number one, they love each other, you know, and, 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 and to win a title or to contend for a title, you have to have that type of camaraderie. They work hard. It's just, you know, uh, the day-to-day -day basis, they're always around each other. They're always pushing each other to be great, you know. You got kids like, uh, at the end of the day, you got the Coriels, you got the Tyrese, but you also have the Chris Ferguson's. You have the Kyra Ratliffs. Those kids, they, they, they're they good friends off the court, but they're competitive, competitive with each other on the court in practice, and, and they push each other every, every day. I was already um, heading up. He was already playing with us. He didn't know what school he was going to, so he was like, why not just come and book a team with me? I think I was Eighth grade year, it was it was all right for our first year. Our freshman year, I think we did good about going to the state championship. And I think last year, it was it really wasn't like it wasn't that good of a season. We lost the second round. Mm, we could have did better. Some things we had to improve and touch up on, but we be back better this season. It would be it would be really really big, you know, for the community, but you know, as well as for the kids, you know, um, for 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 the uptown area, you know, it, it's it's it shines a light that you know, 
in the past, you know, it, it's been stigmatized. It's, you know, this area, you couldn't win and you couldn't be successful, but it's not true. You know, the kid that we're dealing with, I mean, I, like I said, I got 3.5, 3.2 GPAs, uh, you know, on my basketball team. So, you know, it would be great for the community and it would also, it would be great for the city, you know. Right. The thing is, it's just like, when has the last time a public school from Uptown won a state championship? Won a state championship, I'm sorry. So we're trying to, we're going to bring one back up, Uptown, for our community, which I think is going to be huge. And our kids are doing the right thing. So that's always a great fact. All of us coaches know in sports, you got to live in the moment. You don't know how your team's going to be the next year. I think we have potential to be good. Um, we have two good players, uh, senior and Javon Ruffin, a young sophomore, and Chris Lockett, who has a chance to be really, really special. Um, and then we got some younger guys that have to step up. Cannon Jefferson, they'll have a chance. You still got Arch, we'll play again, Will Randall. And we'll have some freshmen that'll come in that I think will really help um, this group that has some size. So I'm just looking forward to the journey, but enjoying the moment because, you know, anything can happen. You know, that's why the guys don't understand when you start training, which hopefully we'll get out of this COVID and we have some time to kind of grind in the summer to set the stage for the next season. Um, but I'll end on this, just talking about that team and the future team. It's basically, I told them, if you don't outwork that kid in Baton Rouge for Dunham, whether it's y'all combined, whether it's Javon and Chris or one of them or both of them outwork him, you're going to have to see him. You're going to have to go through him. And that was kind of my last message to those guys. And, you know, as a team, it's always a team thing. And hopefully we're the better team the next time we meet up and have an opportunity to play for a state championship. son wanted to get into basketball. He had to be about seven or eight. And we put a team together with Newman Rock. I hooked up with him out of New Orleans East. We put a little group together. Greg's son was playing with Lester. Lester had uh, Renegade. the Renegades, Renegades at the time. Alex. Alex, yeah. Playing with the Renegades. And Alex was playing with the Renegades. So by him having his older group with little Greg and him, we decided, he decided that he wanted to started coaching his son. He wanted to get his son in back in his program. So, but he didn't have enough, he didn't have the kids or a team at the time, the kids at his son age at the time. So, me and him, that's how we, we, we hooked up. I've been knowing Greg a minute, a long time. Been a good dude, so I've been knowing him a long time. So we just automatically hooked up. We talked about it and uh, we bought our little two team, bought our team, we bought our little team together over there with Greg's son. 
and Greg added a couple of more kids, and that's how we formed the Rising Stars Second Group group. Alex Age, his son, his little son uh, group, formed that group. I mean, the impact is tremendous right now. When you look at the Sofa Be Right, the final four years, you look at um, McMahon right now, currently in a great situation right now with the sophomore class that's outstanding. And you look at Booker T, also contending for, contending for a state championship right now. I mean, the impact that the Rising Star program has had on the Uptown basketball has been like, it's crazy. It's no disrespect to the high school coaches that's coaching at the uh, school, but I feel like if it wasn't for our kids, which is the Rising Star starting from the class of 2019, and then down to 2022, if you look at the schools like Wright, McMain, Booger T, uh, even uh, De La Salle when we had Rodney that won the championship and left, those four schools is ringing right now. It's like, that's why basketball is back. If you look at those are top four, if you think that's the top one of the top four schools Correct. in the state of Louisiana. So you're looking, you're looking at a, uh, basically uh, uh, after I think after McMahon with Charles Camooch in 09, 08, 09, basketball was really dead uptown. So we really didn't have a contender outside that up until lately, like 2015, 2016, 16, when, when, when the, the Sophie Wright, Wright kids came. And the two Final Fours, then you talk about those two Final Fours, then you talk about the other two, the younger uh, Chris and Slim, getting to Booker T. Washington, and Booker T. Washington going to the state championship game in their freshman year, along with the hold, along with the kids that they had over there already. So you're looking at the impact now with McMain being one of the top teams. They went to the quarterfinal last year. Booker T. being a top team, so if we right is able to maintain their program. So you're looking at uptown basketball. This year yeah, they went to the quarterfinal this year. So you're looking at three three public schools that's able to maintain their program along with what Randy doing at, at Newman. So it just, I mean, Uptown basketball has got to be one of the hottest, if not the hottest area of high school basketball in the state of Louisiana. Can you imagine if all of them was playing together? And now that you see the history, how all of them should have been playing together? <laughs> You came up, I know you came up with this program with uh, Rising Stars, so uh, what was this kind of, you know, your time like with them and what do you, what do you just kind of remember about playing with them? That was the best time of my life. Everybody I know to this day, I met through the Rising Stars. You know, playing with them, we all grew up together. We started young and when we got older, we just kept playing with each other, getting to know each other, not everybody family. I say it was basically fun. It was really fun. Yeah, I really miss playing with the team, a lot of traveling, winning championships, you know, I guess I see the best time of my life. Yeah. Oh, we came along, started third grade. Uh, my, my dad, Greg Lyon, started the program as a coach. And uh, ever since then, we've been having new players coming in. And I, was, I was the manager at first. I was the manager, then I stopped playing. Man, I was the last one to join the team, man. We just stuck together ever since then. Gotcha. Right now, right now I'm at UMass Lowell. I transferred from, from Rhode Island University. And, uh, I plan to come back next season, put it on my mind. But yeah, I just graduated. I'm still making, still think about it. Yeah. Yeah, I was at Tulane University. Now transferring to UMass Lowell. So I'm just ready to make an impact on the team. What did y'all learn, you know, over that first year of college? I learned that it, it's hard. and. Uh, Every day I grind. It's a change of uh, it's a change of pace game for real. Like it's a it's faster in college. And I got I, I adjusted well at that. You just gotta be in the gym every day. They always got somebody trying to be better than you, and trying to outwork you, and always trying to be stronger than you. So no matter what, you got to be in the gym getting bigger. I know you're at LSUA now, so uh, what's uh, what's this kind of you know your how, how's what's this kind of your plans now? And what uh, how you kind of plan on going forward? Well, I red shirted last year, and I've been working on my game. This uh, my, my red shirt year, kind of getting better, stronger, faster, and can't wait to get back on the court.